You think I'm going to go up there with an NIV? I'm sure they don't translate the King James into the Ecuadorian yeah, well. language. Well, what most King James, uh, these guys, they didn't realize when the King James was first printed, there was error in it. Most people don't realize. The people, they never really studied the history of the King James Bible. Okay, and, and King James, you know why he wanted that Bible? Start his church. Huh? Start his church. To start his church, the Episcopal Church. And because of the marriage. Because of the marriage thing. So what they did, they changed some verses here and some language there to try to fit him. And when it first came out, you, you, if you go online, you can get the first printing. And you can see the errors in it. And then they, then they translated it again without... It, it, all I'm saying is, it's that type of spirit we've got to be careful of. Okay? Uh, so, uh, because if you get a wrong spirit in there, man, that can divide a church. Pastor friend of mine, who when he was going through seminary, he uh, he made a statement to one of his professors that uh, I only read the King James Bible. He said, oh, "Is that right?" He said, uh, he re reached out and he brought him a, a copy of 1611 right. King James. He said, "Go ahead, read it." He says, "I couldn't read it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so. Should, I mean, on that on that topic though, shouldn't we seek the truest? Yeah, yeah, and I believe in it. I believe the King James is, is, is very, it's, it's right to the Greek. I have no problem with it. But, but you can take it to the far extreme, like a, what Peter Ruckman does. You can take it to the far extreme and, and build a bitter attitude, like, you know. But yeah, I mean, I believe the King James Bible is closer to the Greek language. I, I believe that with all my heart, yeah. The guys who translated, they, they were brilliant guys, and, and it came from the, from the, you know, from the, from the correct text. Okay. See, what most people don't understand, there's two schools here. There's the Alexandrian school that was liberal. And that's where you get all these NIVs, all that translation from. But the, and then there, and then there's the, there, there was the Masoretic text, which came, which was the true text. It came from the people. It came from the disciples, translated from them on down. Okay. So that that like anything else today, there's a liberal, there's a, and there's a fundamentalist. Okay. And the fundamentalists, okay, use the King James, where the, all the liberals use the other translations. <laughs> it, it, it's, that, it's that simple. I have a quick verse at home, and you can put the King James, the NMV, and any other version there. For me, when I read it in the King James, yeah. it makes more sense. Oh, sure. For some reason, it just does. It does. And some things are missing out of the NIV, the Alpha, the Omega. Exactly, and a lot of and, a lot, and your NIV and New American Standard, they leave. There's a lot of there's a lot of deity of Christ, a lot of verses left out. Yeah, they the, the leave out that Jesus is God. Yeah, that's a tough but the average Christian doesn't know that, and they take the word of liberal scholars more than their pastors. Well, just just in line with your study today, and was it John seventeen twenty three? Perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Yeah. But here in the in the King James, it doesn't say that. Yeah. It says, "I and them, and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one." In one, yeah, yeah. So that's you know that's you say perfection. So the NIV is telling you to be perfect. Yeah, and you can't. And which and you know, uh, and of course, the Greek word perfect means what? Mature. So one time I did that, and I said, oh my goodness, am I a heretic because I said that? Because that's what the Greek word means. They said, why is it translated mature? I don't know why they did it. I wasn't there. <laughs> How do I know why the, the King James translated They could have put down mature, but they didn't. Because, because back in those days, you've got to understand something. Back in those days, culture, the literature was at its prime back in King James' day. I mean, those people, they understood language, and they spoke it well. Okay? That's why I love to hear English people read the Word. I love to hear English people read the Bible. Because they pronounce those words so accurately and perfect. But the average American, we stumble on it. <laughs> Amen. We do. We do. We stumble on it, you know? You know, words change over time. 
over generations. They change over generations. Because in Salisbury, they used to have a school. It used to be the school of imbeciles. It, that was it was right on. I saw pictures of the building. Yeah. Call somebody an imbecile today, and yeah, and that's a bad word. Well, take to, to, take. What about the word gay? What does gay mean? Happy. Happy. Man, not today. You say gay, you say, I am a gay person. Oh my goodness, they're going to think you're a homosexual. Words describe God. Terrible, horrible. Yeah. Yes. And people yes. think that, but it's, to me, I look at it as it's able to cause terror. There you go. Yeah. But it really means, you know, yeah, yeah. you bring yeah. it down, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's yep. terrible. It's yeah. <laughs> so I guess what we're saying here in our verse is that be, just be careful of a critical spirit, okay? Be careful of that. Be careful. You know, I have, I have preferences and I have convictions, but I don't force them on believers. I just live it quietly. For instance, I don't, I don't, I don't think a Christian should drink alcohol. That's me. Okay? So what do I do? I don't go in that person's house if I see him drinking. Well, you low down, dirty, rotten sinner, what do you drink? I'd never do that. Number one, it's not my home. And I'm not going to insult them like that. So if, well, so if they offered to me, I'd say, no thanks. That's what, I appreciate that, but you know what? I, 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 I don't drink. Now, I'm going to go into a long expository message and a three-point sermon and an invitation at the end. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Don't do that. Just, you know what? Live your, live your conviction. That's like when Moody met Spurgeon. Oh, man. He knocked on the door. Spurgeon came out with, with a cigar. cigar. Yeah. And Moody said, you point at the cigar. <laughs> Spurgeon went to Moody, poked him in the belly. Belly, you, you. <laughs> There's even a cigar named after him, Spurgeon Cigars. Oh, right? yeah. yeah, one of the greatest. God oh. used that man, I tell you. All he sin. smoked, All yeah. <laughs> but, but if you uh, know, but if you study his life, what happened? He got convicted because somebody nailed him on it. He says, from that from that point on, I'm not smoking, and he did. He quit it. That's the key. That's the key. He, he saw, and that was before they had medical where, you know, science said, you, you smoke, you're going to get cancer. They didn't have that in those days. But see what happened, uh, uh, some believers got offended, and he said, as Paul said, if I offend my brother, I'll, I'll stop what I'm doing. And that's exactly what he did. But yeah, Spurgeon cigars, never forget that. Yeah, that was funny when, because Spurgeon would say, well, look at you, you're glutton. <laughs> I just say, leave it alone. Let the Holy Spirit work on people, right? That, that, that's, that's my thing. Let the Holy Spirit deal with people. He can do a much better job than my big mouth. Yeah, let the Holy Spirit do it. Because that way, when a person is convicted by the Holy Spirit, it'll get done. Uh, my nature is, the more you nag me, I won't do it. If you nag me, my wife knows that. Keep nagging me. You can put that honeydew list all you want. You keep <laughs> nagging me, it's going to get longer. I won't do it. You know, I won't. I said, don't. She's learned over years. Don't nag me. She doesn't nag me. I get all that stuff done. But <laughs> you're just afraid you forget. Huh? You just forget. You forget. <laughs> you well, some things I do purposely forget. But, <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah. so. What you're really talking about is grace. Yeah, it's grace, yeah. Yeah. We need to learn to walk in grace and, 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 and really uh, practice that, you know. Okay. Um, Molly says hi. She had to work today, so. She was kind of down today. She couldn't be here. Plus, it's our anniversary today, so. Yeah. Yeah, 40, year, 40 years. 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. And I told her, I said, Kathy, I gave her some flowers in the car last night. I said, honey, um, I'm, I'm done. I'm going into the promised land, either with you or without you. I've been in the wilderness too long now. <laughs> Did you 40 years? 40 years. I said, I said I'm done. I'm going to the promised land. So. <laughs> All right. Notice verse 19. Uh, and we know that we are of God. The whole world lieth in wickedness. All right. Let me ask you a question. How is the world under the power of Satan? Oh, Satan has dominion. Huh? Satan has dominion. Okay, dominion. But how? How? How does Satan 
have the world under 